okay, it's been a wild Monday for the pound, and I see this big up move, and I thought, well, I'm not really a pound trader, but I am now. So I sold it up here, and um, I sold at the market in a bad price, so I put sell limits above me to get picked up on a better price if it should go up. It's about 20 or 40K up here. And all I did was take my uh, trusty uh, limit drops. There's a 20 pip stop to make 40 pips, and I just laid it in here. Um, I'm gonna put. I'm just gonna go end to end on these, so that way, you know, they take them out. Somebody said, "Well, how do you sell into that without getting killed?" I think if you made enough money on some of these other moves that look like you're getting killed but in essence what you're really doing is uh getting filled so if you put an order bank like i just dropped there in here you stack them in here for uh now this is the other critical part of the plan is is it going to be a 15 minute ticket or a one hour ticket because it was a one hour ticket you got filled it came back to kind of like where it broke out i'm just going to say that it it kind of dogeed out it fizzled, and then kaplunk, and now it's doing this. So it's a five-minute chart. Top of the hour is coming, and um, I drew this trend line breakout, kind of like you could trade failures of so-called technical analysis because this five-minute chart, to me, reveals the hole beneath. So these vacuums, and there's a guy that I saw on the... Uh, YouTube talking about supply and demand and he has some kind of like you know everybody has a course or something take his course but uh he had a discord channel so I thought maybe I'd go check it out uh, if anybody wants to use the scripts because what he's saying is and this is a apparently a a term that I said once because I thought it made sense is this is a fresh this is a, a fresh because this is an old zone. So we could crush into this. And people will be getting out. I'm sure at this doji, they'll be scalping out of something. I almost guarantee it. Like, I'll be getting out of something here, I hope. Then, it could just slice down. So we could just slice all the way down, too. Um, but when you go to the daily chart, you say things like, hmm, um, are you trading the breakout? Is this the London breakout? That's the Asian breakout. <laughs> if you put a buy stop for confirmation, I know I confirmation's a good thing, I guess, right? Make sure you get that uh, antibody test before you decide to write yourself out. Put this 10 pip window here. People made 10 pips on that. They sold above here. So I had to go short up there, even though I was already short. So I had to go shorter. -er. I had another 30K I had to put on there. You know, this is a tremendous move. And on the four hour, it's like two trend trade entries, small bodies of trend trade entry. Because it's the cheapest. Instead of trading reversals, you just get in on like, the smaller the body, the bigger you trade. So how many small bodies are there? The market's telling you here, you got to get in big on the four hour, like this. That's huge. The market, it went up, it went down. It hasn't gone anywhere. Breaks out, come back, actually retest that window. So this guy was talking about these charts, and the, my only gripe is, of course, I had a gripe, is that he's got the data like this on the daily, and he's saying stuff like, yeah, there's a supply zone, like, um, up here, you know, <laughs> right? Or there's one down here, but I'm like, what about all the ones in between? Like, who's waiting that long? Who could do that? Now here's a monster fresh low. 
The Lonely Wick. Holy shit. Now that's a 25 pip grid, so that's quite tremendously um, expensive. 100 pip uh, Smackdown. Tell me rip up today. and what, People are just blown away by the market moving like that. You know, the four-hour chart, it's a simple story of like, there's a doji, you better get on the train. The doji train's leaving. Yeah, well, you missed it. You, you fucked up. If you didn't get into that doji or get the fuck out after you scalped that window like everybody else did, everybody knew that she had a condition. <laughs> but you, you were that one guy. Yeah. So, you know, like this supply zone, so to speak. You put orders in that 10 pip window. Yeah, that's a great trade. But if you don't get the fuck out, you're underwater on that trade right now, right? It, this is the whole thing. You, you got to get the fuck out of the trade. It's not a trade till you get the fuck out. When they come all the way back to this little cute doji and they stab that, wow. Plus, they're coming back to all of this previous um, highs. You got one here. There's all these clusters of what used to be a top. It's a wedge. Uh, just that whole that whole thing is like a... Uh, I don't know if I can do a line here like that, but... Okay, so this... I'm even going to include, well, all this stuff. So once you start to... You start to cut through these, you see how vicious that was? But, you know, fractally speaking... Right, I mean, this is, if you just looked at, if all you knew was that, so to speak, you know, but look at this. This one is a, is a different situation because it's, it's about, you had to go short above here, even though you're underwater right now. You had to for the big swing or for the kind of like breakout, come back to pullback, because this is really a breakout. If this is really a breakout, it's got to pull back somehow. So you could counter trend trade it right for right now. You could scalp and just say I'm up. I'm as soon as it reaches the top of the hour, I'm out. You could look at the one hour chart, and so you could scalp out. So I've been selling because my tablet died. So I don't have any predetermined scripts now. I have to hand drop them, which is better. Because then you could just put them in here, set it and forget it. Of course, like I said, you cannot set it and forget it to the extent which you um, forget to get out of this short that you put in here. Oh, shit. Drill down on my uh, 500 quarter bar again. Okay, so let me, let me flash to the... Okay, so here is the... This window you're selling in there and um, another thing is that you actually come back to that window in other words that's after they take all the toilet paper so this is the okay here we go but there's an order imbalance even at this level you can't see it on this chart but that's ricocheting off this then it wicks up and there's still supply up here now this Sam's Sidon guy kind of ruined the supply and demand theory when he ripped everybody off because he didn't have a trade plan for it. he couldn't trade it it's just too vicious I mean it's just too hard you got to put orders in there and unless you're going to babysit it you just have to put your orders in and just uh... so I watched about four videos on the supply and demand one guy was saying oh well you know uh, you know that's very risky to just put sell limits up there I'm like you're not kidding but also makes a lot of money. Yeah, it it is it is. If you just say, well, I'm just gonna um, when the market's here, you say I'm just gonna put in uh, every uh, ten pips I'm gonna buy, and when it, the deeper it goes, the more I'm gonna buy. But I I got a reason to buy. It's because it's coming back. Um, and retesting that because this is a this is an up move here. Capturing all that supply, so to speak, and then ramming it back to here which is back into these tops now the guy that's buying this top he did make money so you can't see it on this time frame 
That's a four-hour chart, sorry. That's a four-hour chart, so you know inside there, there's the one-hour bounce. So that lives inside, just like in here, there's probably head and shoulders bullshit both directions. You're like, what the fuck? Yeah, I know, but for the person that just trades because it's dropped 10 pips, you got buy limits that are 10 pips deep. You got sell limits that are 10 pips deep. From current price. So that's the only criteria I'm using. And then I hand drop them in kind of logical places. I mean, I don't want to stand in front of this thing. Is it's like So just like the euro popped yesterday, uh, you you just you just can't you know everything gonna cr when it crushes in that window unless you're gonna jump on that four hour doji here you're, you're screwed you're not you're not gonna be able to ride it so how do you ride it and that's what the trend so to speak trend but like I said if you if all you trade is limits then you're gonna miss the high probability uh, breakout trades like this where you all oh, look at this small candle look it's trapped now this is a supply area entry but it's like i said this is like trapped under the auction floor like this is bid to like people are like going what <laughs> what kind of price is she just uh just like if you woke up in the morning you know there are people that probably bought here on sunday they're like woohoo i love this and they add it to the position because they got confirmation along the way here on some kind of harebrained crossover, laggy bullshit. Add to the position. Then uh, this guy was saying, I just can't stand this harebrained speak, man. It's worse than, it, it's. there's nothing worse than the harebrained speak of the, um, well, they're doing that to trick people into the trade. See, they drone run it up there. And you get all excited. <laughs> you start pulling the trigger. See, they know you're going to pull the trigger. So they got that uh, corona algorithm they're running now. It's like lockdown, no lockdown, Ra r r rape or riot. I don't know. I, tonight I think we're just going to do some looting. <laughs> I, you know, and they looted. So you would feel like you've been looted here. And that um, when people say, well, there's tra traders that are smarter than you out there. Really? I mean, if I just showed up like a drunken sailor and just bought because every four hours it was down, like a hillbilly, hillbilly with a 100 pip stop, and I just said, buy. So what's your trade plan? Well, when it's down, I buy. How's that work? Well, buy here, buy. Fucking I was in the goddamn 8K, and I just let it rip, and then uh, here I didn't get, here I could have got out of everything. See, <laughs> so you could have taken the whole, you could have built a long position here and then dumped it, right? Does that work all the time? You know, it kind of does uh, work here. Like you bought here, you bought here, you bought here, you bought there. Uh, you didn't buy this. You bought this pullback, this one, this one, this one. Then when it came to here, you got the fuck out. That's how I'm trading the market. That's my secret. So I'm just putting in limits, and if I, and I'm holding on to my um, Android now like an iMarkets Live person, and I'm looking at it going, yeah, I think I'm going to scalp out of that. I just made, like, enough money. I think I'm okay. Because I can just put the limits back in and just rinse and repeat. But I'm telling you, the British pound, it's not for... This is a lot of pips for our chart, granted. but And look at this move. As it cleans house, it's taking out the looming vacuum. That's what I call it, the looming vacuum. Mastering the looming vacuum course. Sorry, that's module five. You're going to need a pass. You need a hall pass and a password. I saw Bitcoin took a jump. In fact, I had my money parked in Bitcoin on Friday, and I go, we're right at the apex of a fucking doji. Why don't I just let it ride? And I thought, you know what? I don't want to babysit a goddamn wallet trade. Another problem with trading is that everything's money. Like, I look at my car and I go, man, I mean, can't I just... I mean, I, when I see people spend that much on a car, I think, oh my, why don't you just open a trading account? Of course, they would probably destroy their trading account, but the markets aren't designed for people that aren't into like, oh, I just made a bunch of money. Oh, I just lost a bunch of money. Hmm. That's interesting. How's that work again? 
oh, you mean the market's volatile? What's volatility mean? It means that you made a lot of money very quickly or you lost a lot of money very, very quickly. And I think that this is why people are afraid. So you can see the goomerism of Corona now. I think you see why the toilet paper is missing. Is that it's as if you let the public trade a, a fucking Forex account with high leverage. And this is why the nanny state did take the, the high leverage away from the uh, wannabe sports car drivers you know it's just so sad and uh but this is the world we're in and of course now you can see i was watching the riots and i thought this is their version of a party it reminds me of like a uh, like a lollapalooza but with firecrackers i mean it's like what is going on here people you gotta lighten up on the uh Go trade a Forex. What happened to game? I thought the gamers were supposed to be the ones that had their shit together. These weren't gamers out there. They're dressed like action figures out of their own game and shit. Look at these guys. I'm surprised the news guys weren't low. Look at these guys. They really fucking, they showed up prepared. So I'm watching these news reporters out there. Not watch, watch a lot of stuff, but they're bragging about how um okay i'm in a new room in my house i'm not used to it uh, so you know bragging how they're standing out in front of these in this rockets and bullets and then these chicks are like step back you know you should watch out and they're trying to direct them i'm like fuck you i was in fucking iraq fuck you i'm a reporter from uh baghdad with the battery cables on my nipples come on get the fuck out of here who do you think you're talking to I can trade fucking the British pound, god damn it. Thing moves 80 pips in the blink of an eye. You're like, what the fuck? When the elections came out, <laughs> I traded that election thing. Man. I made so much money, I said, I'm not going to trade for another uh, two weeks. So I trade very. So if you do make a lot of money, you just have to trade lightly after that because there's no fucking way you can step back in thinking that, oh, that's going to happen again? Nah. I don't think so. Take a look at the um, take a look at the S and P five hundred. Now this is the big bear market that uh, I haven't updated this uh, these uh, supply and demand zones in a while. But take a look at this puppy. Now this is my magical uh, thirty four period. Um, I think it's linear weighted. It's just simple. Wait, yeah, no linear weighted. That's my favorite because it's just it's like a it's like a trend line. Now, you could tell me, and I could tell you all day long, that 34 is the, and we all know Bill, Bill Williams uh, uses the 3455 MACD because it, it's part of his Elliott wave. He's Elliottitian in, in some degree. And wave four would be the pullback to the 34. So you could claim this is four, this is five, and you're done. But, you know, some bullshit like that. Or you, this is your baseline, and you only take long trades above it. So... Right. Kind of drifty here. We made it back to center point. That's good enough. Here, we made it back to center point. I, I say center point is going to be this big fat doji. This is the daily, so we know that's a weekly doji on the on the tax. So the party's over. Okay. Business as usual. Volatility go bye-bye. Although the British pound is spiking up, and I'm shorting that. I'm scalping that for at least 30 pips. That's my target, 30 pips. So my targets are just pips, and my stops are just pips. And so lately I've been write, rewriting the titles of the scripts so that they make more sense as far as I put a two-pip spread into the final dollar amount. So I, I made them to look like this. It's going to be like, um, I mean, it's a big folder. I'm going to publish this. It's going to be pure limit drops. You, there's no double-click involved here. If you double-click them, while they're inside of your favorites, which I loaded them in the favorites, what's going to happen is it's going to open and want to edit. But that's okay. You can edit as you feel fit. Um, so this is open source, so to speak. So this guy, Clevesis, made this, uh, these grids for me, and now I'm just going to use them because my tablet died. And so I've 
given these a lot of thought because I did spend a lot of time making uh, versions of it. The initial 10 order idea, it's a 10K and one drop. If you drop this above, it is a sell limit. Okay. If you drop it above, if you drop it below, it's a buy limit. Now, because we're on the daily, you can't see the tickets coming in. And I only think I, I can't. Oh, I'm sorry. I'm on the I'm on the DAX. I can't even do that trade. So I have this thing called closed ticket CT. Um, I guess I could call it closed ticket. I got another one called closed ticket. What I'm going to combine all these scripts. But if you've never traded before or you want to, or you just still want to trade, is this guy from this white oak thing keeps sending me this, I'm a professional, we're, we're for professional traders. I'm like, you're kidding, right? Then he's got this email. He sends me this threat like, you know, if you don't answer this one, I'm never talking to you again. I'm like, promise? I don't know. I'm sure he's a nice guy. In the, in, the, in the right lighting. And that got some comments in my old videos about, you must you must be jealous about RCT. I'm like, yeah. I, I, you know what? I'm not jealous. I just can't. I just cringe every time I think about charging somebody for these fucking scripts. There's no magic in this. It's just, uh, I'm closing out. Every time I drag this by the order, this is another trick. It's, it's deleting the ticket you can't see because I'm so, um, they're like one pip apart. And on the DAX, God knows what that comes out to. Okay. Let's try to clean up this chart. Oh, there you go. Then delete all objects. Should be in there. So I always have my arrows come in because I want to make sure the orders are coming in and the broker's taking them. And you can't see them very well here, but if you go to the master file, you'll see. Um, okay, I want to stay away from... Well, I did trade at the market, though, to make this money, so I was able to make like uh, five grand or something with this, uh, this demo account. I brought it back from the end of the world. But I think it's better if you've never traded before or if you're still trading and you don't want to trade at the market because it's a lot of work to sit there and pull the trigger and go, oh, really, I'm going to do this trade now? Because it should be obvious where the market's going to come to, even if you're going to do the other side of the trade. Like, um, I guess if you have to, like you don't think you're in big enough, that's the only way i trade at the market. You'd be like, yeah, I know. Like I said, I started the video. I said I sold up there. I sold up there. Not a good price. Not a good price. You know, it didn't look like a good price. Looks like a great price now, right? This is the British pound. So I, I, bit, I bit the bullet. I sold at the end of four hours there. So I missed the wick top. But with my real money, I sold the wick top. Okay, so now if this pulls back by here, I should be cashing out of something. Now this this is set up to cash out, so this guy's hopefully going to cash out of something. Now, um, so if you're really going to stick by this four-hour chart, okay, I have this four hour chart because I want to see them take the wick out from the last four hours and that would definitely be my exit hopefully it is part of my exit right now hopefully I'm getting out of something because uh, let's see we trim off these guys 10 pips away they start to light up okay so that'd be nice let's get something off the table here Okay, so I'm going to wait for that to happen. Okay, so I'm buying this euro as it drops. It's been about 15 minutes. I'm about to cash out of this whole British pound trade, though. So there was my setup. I had those sell limits up there in case 
And see, um, buyers came in there for a little bit, caused a doji on the five, then ripped. And now we're going to cash out. Uh, we could still keep tanking, though. So if you look at the other time frame, you're, gonna, you're not going to say that. You're going to say, oh, let it keep tanking. So if we let it keep tanking, uh, I'm going to buy as it goes down also. Look at the half hour. Just a real smash to the floor there. Going after these, uh, this vacuum down here. Big hard sell-off because of that big hard up move. I mean, that's quite a move, you know. Got an inverted hammer out of it after all. So scalped off the top, that's 40 pips off the top of that. I'm sorry, it's 50 uh, pips on this. Just the last, um, that last move. So we could we took 30 pips of it because we got in on the four hour. So that's 30 pips slam down. Now it's just kind of going to be all wishy-washy and so I'm going to scalp out of that. I should have a typical profits key here. Let's hope so. Ah, let's see, here's this. I guess this is it. I put Z so I may force it to be at the end of the list. Oh, there it is. Chasing the bounce there. So I'll be holding the long euros in the end here. Oh, those are winners too. Okay, so it's holding on to the little bit of euro that I bought on the plunge. So I put 10k rack in there, one pip apart. So that was very satisfying. Of course, on the daily chart, it's a different story. So here it's a complete, clean, four-hour wham. 5 p.m., bam, it's over. You're done. Go take a nap. It's fine. It's nothing else. That's it. Clean. Boom. All the way back to the doji. Now it's just going to be another long time for the next setup. On the daily, it's just like, that's it. Right? Everybody that sold here in the supply window or demand window, whoever you are, that top, that double top there, they're gone. They're out. They made their money. They're done. The guy that sold the brave soul who took off his mask and sold above here, he made a lot more. Now it's just any man's trade now. It's just all drifty and just all bullshit now. It looks like buyers are coming in, actually. Look at that. See, buyers are coming in now. We got it just in time. Look at it. Just in time. So that's the trade. This was the support, didn't, didn't hold. You could, you were saying, oh, it's going to break this delta. Uh -uh. But just having the sell limits up in that window, that's the trick, right? Saying, I'm going to do that trade. And uh, if I'm wrong, I still got the sell limits up there because guess what? I'm going to sell if it goes up there. Because it's going to be a great place to sell the retest of the high of the day. So I'm up for the whole zone entry trading. I'm not into this one price thing. It's a supply zone, not a supply price. This is the this is the four hour um, complete insanity of the yen. Now this was a great trade here. So I traded the yen tr today too with these scripts. I put the yen in. Um, so last night, Sunday night, I was planning on a pullback. So I laid in grids. All the way down. This is a uh, 20 pip grid here. These gray numbers. And so I bought that plunge. When I got to here, I got out. You know, when it makes it back full circle to the, um, you got to get out. There's no other way. You have to get out there. Think about it. The market went down for eight hours. It goes up four. Just get out. I mean, that's an amazing retracement. Now here, eight hours down, consolidation, whatever have you, dojis, the breakout traders, ram up. You, you, you got to tell me you, you're not holding on thinking it's going to take out and just keep going to the moon. After a move like that, in four hours, you've got to have some kind of, uh, 
I mean, you got to be practical. Look at how clean this move was. So this is the walk down. Tower Yen walks down the four hour. Blam. Then come back. Doji's. There's the Doji trade on the four hour. You know, you just you got to take it. You got you can't back test it and say, well, I don't know if do dude, you just got to get in there, go for it. You're probably going to be disappointed you didn't put a target down here, but then there was another doge you could have got in here. So you would, if you want to put a uh, sell stop there and a buy stop there and be a goober, sure. Um, I'd take the initiative and get in here thinking, oh, they just stop hunted this, uh, or they just took out this little vacuum. I think I'll just get in here. That's great. And just fucking I already bought this one. I'm going to buy that one. Could have sold this one and said, well, I made this much. You know, not a lot of pips, 10 pips. You know, there's sellers above here, 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 here. So put sell limits up there. It's pretty simple. But, uh, of course, you just got to keep doing it over and over again. It's like having customers in the store, I suppose. Like, look, there's some idiot over here who wants something here. I'll give it to him. Put the ticket right up there. Yeah, put that on display. Come and get my tickets. Now, I try not to repeat the entry prices. This broker barely trades, piece of shit broker. In Asia, it's not even trading now. So my drop's not coming in. It sucks. Come on, baby, you can do it. Waited for one tick. So this is the logarithmic one that gets in on the... Uh, Martingale theory of the stops are the same way though. Let's go somewhere else where we can watch it. That's gonna take forever to come in. Okay, so the buyers came back in on the pound, and uh, we could have bought that plunge also as we were getting out. But I was getting I was getting out of my shorts, so I don't think it's done going um, up. But I know when when I'm counter trend trading, I know that I'm not you know this could come all the way back you know. But it's like I don't want to lock up margin in this thing. Look at the fifteen, so we could still tank. There's plenty of hole beneath us. It's quite a move. I mean, look at this thing on the on the uh, one hour. You got to ask yourself, what the hell's going on? Something's going on. It could get frisky here. I'd rather buy in limits, so I put limits down here. So I just keep doing this over and over again. It's monotonous, but um, eh, it's challenging. That's better than rioting, I suppose, <laughs> at some level. Okay, here's a 30 pip stop to make 20. Now, I kind of like this trade, this all day long trade. 15 pip range, 6K. They gotta plunge that down and take out that stop. I'm risking um, 20 to make, but I'm risking like 22 to make uh, eight bucks. High probability targets. You might want to buy here, put it right on this. And that's what that looks like. So that's how you do it. That's how you get in these trades without getting killed. So your sell window is obviously the market's telling you sell anything above here. Okay. Now the best trade comes back. Sell anything above there. Great trade. Especially coming into the next session when the whole the whole angle of the market could change coming into the next session. So that's uh, another factor. So I, I know those orders went in. I'll delete these. I could keep them. Take a picture. Let's see. I kind of just figure, well, Try not to do dumb shit in here. So, I mean, I could leave it as a history, but I don't, actually, it doesn't say how long those tickets last. But typically, mine are going to last eight hours to a day. I did put the dailies in here, so I wrote a bunch of dailies. I've been, that's all I've been doing really is since the tablet died, I had to expand these. So, I try to make so here's a good one risk 40 pips to make a, a 20 risk 20 pip stop to make 40 pips. Now, this one I tried to put in a uh, oh no, this is 6k. So, that's a 
that's probably a kind of a fakeish number. We have to build the spread into that. Now we look for a place to drop it. So dollar yen. I think the dollar yen is going to be a sell if it goes back up. So I'm going to sell all the way into the new highs. Now this will be a little risky because I think if we take out this high, um, risky in the sense that if you take out this high, there's a giant hole up here. Right, so that could be the end of the world for the uh, for the bears. Once you, they keep pounding these wicks here. This is a big hole up here. So I'd put my orders really deep into it. Maybe not even. Uh, so here's a 30 pip zone, an 8k. That's interesting, 8k. So if I put it on top of this wick, um, I'll move it up. Uh, 20 pips, so I start selling up into like that. And that's how you do that trade because, uh, and, and that's logarithmic apparently, even though I didn't say it was on the thing. But I uh, put the other one, start it there, layered in. You're risking 40 bucks to make 20 bucks there. But what's going to happen there is it's going to be like a uh, dead cat bounce uh, on the soft the ceiling. And uh, you're looking for the market to go up. Not going past 40 pips now. I know it's, they say trade with stops, but uh, you got to consider um, what's the probability of making 20 pips with a 40 pip stop? It's a lot higher. I wouldn't run that script all day long, but uh, here's here's a break even. 30, people talk break even all the time. And it doesn't mean you have to wait for your 30 pip target to get hit either, because if you see it only bounce 20, you're like, yeah, I think that thing's done tanking. You have to accept that reality. So here, if the British pound ever takes out this by, like, if I wake up and we're down here, which is another 40 pips, this is a 20 pip grid, I definitely want to buy there. So I'll just buy all the way down to there. Now, this is the daily script. This is a completely different idea uh, than, and now I'm going to put in a, like, an iceberg order. This is going to be a, uh, like a, Every 10 pips, I try to make these 10 by 10 because 10 by 9 was bothering me. I like 10 by 10. It's kind of like 20, 20 by 20 or or double Ds or something. Um, but if I put that down here, I know this is going to be a 10 pip window. So it would be like a little scalp and I'll just place it right there in the basement. So now the market comes down into this real dense pack of tickets if that should happen. And you don't have to be there for the trade. Comes down, rips in, ricochets out of there. The targets are... So the complexity comes here like, okay, here is a, a true scalp. You're, you're buying a 10-pip window, so I'm going to delete everything and uh, put it down fresh here so you can see it come in. I want to buy this basement here, this deep discount. This. Uh, so there's the stop connected to that 10K, and the targets are kind of like above where we're at right now. So that is a kind of a, a five-pip master stop on that whole rack because once you take out this, you start cutting into this, and I hate to... I always like to build a position with as much margin as I can get going. Probably max out at 100 to 150K because I started in like 10K, 20K, and I'm like, you know what? One more time, and I'm going to have to fucking buy more. So as it's coming down, it's a challenge with the market, me against the market. But uh, like today, when this British pound went up, I go, oh, really? So it's going to be like that. I didn't start selling till we took out this daily wick. So I, I knew here I wanted to start selling just in case there was enough sellers in here. And there was for a little bit. There was a little scalp in there. But then here, I knew I had to bet the ranch above this. So we scalped it there. Now it's going to be looking for nooks and crannies on the one hour, four hour. And, and once you're out of the trade also, even... It's not to say that this can't, thing can't come all the way back. Then I, it could, you know, and it probably will come back to maybe this or this or all the way down to here, for God's sakes. But I'm not waiting a week for that. I'm going to take my 
my 40 pips, my 20 pips, and I'm going to put in pi limits down here for whatever drama is going to go on in the smaller time frames because we're up at cell limits above the height of 10. If they start coming into here tomorrow, there's so many cells up here which would get some kind of pullback. I mean, the market doesn't, market doesn't move in a straight line, and that's to your advantage because if you go to the, uh, the one-hour chart, there's plenty of good trades here where you just keep buying every like an idiot every time it pulls back, right? Or get out of your shorts if you sold into it. You got to be able to think what the other guy's thinking, right? I mean, you got if you could play tennis with somebody, you'd have to like, oh, I think he's gonna think I hit it far. Yeah, I, <laughs> it's a lot of momentum. You'd have to play the ball differently, right? Then if the guy just like fakes like he's gonna hit it hard and he just drops it over the net, and you're like, oh fuck. I can't even get to it. So I guess it's a game in that sense, although you can't manipulate the other guy. Like, this market doesn't know you exist, so it's not like you could... You could really fuck with somebody in tennis, psychologically. But here you don't have that advantage to really... You know. So yeah, there is this whole forming. Can we fill it? Is it just going to just creak into it, or is it going to be... Like, so we don't know. If you did take the approach of I'm just buying big pullbacks, if it pulls back 20 pips, let me know. So if there was a robot that you could build, and I'm sure you could build it, this shouldn't be too much of a brain teaser. I built a robot that buys if the market pulls back in one hour, 20 pips. It buys here, it buys here, it buys here, it doesn't buy anymore. And maybe, maybe it buys here. But for God's sakes, hopefully I'm getting out of something above here. And what if I had a robot that sold if it was up um, 75 pips in an hour? Okay, it didn't make a lot of money. Then it sold, then it sold, and then it sold a lot here. And that's when it made its money. It made it back. If it starts to go into uh, Dogeville like this, and then bam. So you can kind of see that coming because, um, sure, there was it was overdone. You know, it drifted off the high of the day, it drifted off of, but there was still enough void left to fill, fresh uh, highs looking back, you know, to take that out. So I think that's what's going on with the prices, what's driving the prices, well, how you interpret it with your trends and all that stuff and your triangles. Triangles are just a lack of volatility and, uh, there's nothing magical about that. I mean, it could be a flag. It just means that the market's simmered down and people are going to make decisions, you know. Um, they're probably going to make decisions every hour. I mean, when the market's, like, just wailing up, you know, there's probably somebody that's sold here thinking, well, you know, it's double top. <laughs> they're expecting this. Okay. They could do that. It did it here, right? Didn't it come to here and just go backing off? Well, yeah, so you look back at it. But uh, here, so we know there's buyers here that think this is a trend, but what if this, this thing starts to come unravel when it, when Europe opens? We're down here. Aren't you going to want to buy for a scalp to here? Of course. I don't really care about my indicators at that point, I hope, because, or, because it's an obvious trade. Sure, it could keep tanking. It could go straight down every hour for the next five days. I don't think so. So what isn't possible? Okay, maybe it's, it's two hours down. Buyers come in. It ticks around a little bit. Maybe it comes down a little more. Maybe maybe a big thing. Well, I'm buying the big thing down. Besides, I got the limits in here all night tonight. If I wake up and they're tagging that, okay, expect some kind of scalp. So you can't be greedy. You can't write scripts that have 150-pit targets. I mean, this is like, you got to have an exit. Or it's not a trade. Sure, you could look at your balance and say, look, I'm up fucking on nine grand, but I'm not. I'm banked out of this thing. I'm I'm up to nine grand, but I'm not. So I started with five grand, and then I let uh, Ryan's bot have its way with it and just uh, treat it like a, you know, right road hard, put away dry. Um, and so that's was kind of <laughs> kind of fun, but I can now trade it, you know. <laughs> 
Besides, I can get in the market when you should, you know, get in the market would be during a small bar. When you can run a tight stop. Is it get in the, well, I'm sorry. <laughs> to get in the market here after screaming up bar also is a market order, you know. Um, or a screaming down move, you know, if you're there, you know, it's down hard. But that's a wider stop. That's a riskier trade, so to speak, because you have the wider stop. Big bar means wide stop. Small bar means tight stop. If you're going to trade based on breakouts, because if you're going to get in those dojis, you got to accept the fact that when you're wrong, you want to get out. You don't run a wide stop on a doji entry, do you? Because that was, you should have done that on the, save that for the big bars. And then your money management's based on, well, this is for that and that's for that. Okay, she's, she's a cheap date. She's expensive. You, you can't, you couldn't date a bunch of, uh, um, you know, high maintenance, you'd go broke. So you have to have a few, you know, a couple of people, just, girls just don't care. I guess they don't have like some play, they don't have their own agenda. Agenda free girl. That's what you need. And then you need a fake girl, like, like a CNN girl, fake eyelashes. That poor girl, she's so cute that works for Trump. She's got these eyelashes. I think that if she blinks too hard, the reporter's going to fall over. I started to come out there, and they sent, they sent her out there, and she does this thing. <laughs> she's like, well, I'm done talking. See you later. Bye. That's <laughs> so cute. I mean, and the reporters are just, like, asking the most ridiculous questions, and she's taking it. But Trump would be like, that has to be the shittiest question I've ever heard in my life. Yeah, no kidding. How do you feel about the corona killing a million people and, and your your racist comments causing people to die? I don't know. When was the last time you beat your wife? About two months ago. Wait a second. I forget what I said. I, mean, I, I got to beat her right now. I'm going to beat the shit out of her. Listen. You hold your mic up to the, uh, but, uh, so I'm going to take a nap, wait for the market to consolidate for another move. So I'm going to take all these scripts I wrote and put it in some, uh, folder called the limit drop. So it's the LD, the LD folder. So I need to stick in here is the, uh, close ticket. The CT, because the CT is the trick. Like if I said, oh, I think I put too many tickets in. Or I see the market's coming after my tickets, right? You need to reserve the right to delete your insane idea. So you don't want to be too frightened. You need to take the mask off at some point because you'd be surprised how your first idea was and, you know, the, I see this is very conservative here. I'm selling up in a window that's way above me for like hours away. I may not even fill. So that's the other consideration because some of this stuff, forget about it, right? I mean, look at this. So big down on that pullback, and now we're drifting up on the 15. So because I have the limits and I don't want to buy. I still want to sell into this bridge pound as it's topping out. I'm going to go to the the limit trick. The the first thing I'm going to do is put a bad ratio in here. So I'm going to sell all the way up there with a 30 pip stop. So I just stack these guys for eight hours like this. I'm risking thirty dollars now. I'm risking uh, ninety bucks there to make uh, forty five. Then I could put in some uh, little spots up here, little hot spots. This will be a uh, risk. Um, let's see, my risk. Uh, 20 pips make 20 pips. I'll put it right on top of that bar. It's, for, it's pretty wide stop. So I put tight stops and wide stops because here's a 12 pip stop. This is very small, it's 3K. So I'll put it right in between there. It doesn't look that tight here. It looks it looks like a great stop here, but I'm the 50-minute chart. 
Oh, was going to tank. So I want to buy down here. So I could trade with these little hot spots. Uh, trades like this be like, okay. Um, this is probably, this is almost like a single drop. And I had the single drops in here too. Like here's a single drop oh, for all day long. It's just up to you to put them in. That's all. And I mean, that's the only work about it. So I take it over here to this uh, deep vacuum. And that's just a 1K. Look at the stop. It's huge. 22 pip stop. It looks huge on this thing. So if I'm just going to play around in the market without trading at the market, I come up here to this drop. This is a 12 pip stop to make 20 pips. It lasts for an hour. I'm going to put it right there. One case. There's a two hour version. So the three hour version I'm going to put down here. And here's the trick is uh, how long does the order last? What's the exposure? If this lasts all day, now on this one, you'd have to realize that this is going to last all day. And it doesn't take long to about put about 200K in here. So it's just, uh, I'm going to buy down here. There's a stop. I'm going to buy here. And uh, always, you can you never go wrong with buying down here. A super deep discount. And we might hit that. So on the chart, it looks just like a price here. But if you look to the left, that's the reason. So we could still plunge, right? So people that are holding the British pound short uh, through this whole thing for the next three days, they're like, I don't care. Like the guy in the, uh, the uh, supply and demand thing. He was holding some entry that he did here. Like, so he did this entry. I was surprised he didn't point out the fact that people were scalping in that same window and that they weren't going to hold it for all those zigzags because I can't. I, I'm not going to do it for the whole trade. But so this, if you said this was the window you sold or even this one, now when you go to the 15-minute chart, I mean the one-hour chart, you can see that, yeah, there was a scalp and then went higher and you scalped it here, but... And this could keep tanking, that is true. And that's what he did. He So he had a, like, into the future, we were way down here. And he got out maybe down here or something. I'm like, yeah, got you, but... Um, thing that I'd like to do is go flat. Put sell limits up here. Put pie limits down there and just go back to sleep. <laughs> Because I just I don't I just want to take the money and run on it. So I sit there and uh, you know now it looks like it's gonna tank. That's okay. It's all good. Put buy limits from this tickets here. I'm gonna just drop drag and drop. Depending how much money I have in the account now, if I plot this out properly, I would come in here with these 10ks that last 12 hours. I just wrote these fresh off the rack. 30 pips stop make 14. there and this is where i just get i go crazy i'm like you know what? i love that ticket let's just put 10ks in here like this all the way down 12 hours i'd tell you there's nothing like it this is like you don't even have to pull the trigger on these trades these are fantastic trades uh this style of trading to me is the ultimate. You just set it and forget it. You're just like, you know, it's going to be like this. Watch. 20 pips to make eight. Terrible trade. 12 hours. So I'll put another one there. Another bad ratio. Now let's do some good ratios. Here's one I just made up that's got uh, more proper risk. Twenty-eight dollars make thirty-three bucks. So this is the new ones, the new ten Ks. We have a twenty-five pip stop to make thirty-six pips, but in the end, that's the real dollar payout with a two pip spread assumed. No commissions. So I'll show you what that looks like. It's quite a wide stop, but that's something you put down here like this, I think, right? Because you could survive that. That is a thirty-minute chart, so. On the daily chart, you're like, yeah, I can see that on the daily. Look at the stop on that thing. That's a 10K. 
Now imagine you just kept dropping this. I could probably get away with only so many of these on this. Uh, this broker has a limit. Like here, this is going to be with a 30 pip stop to make 14 pips. Four hour chart, euro dollar. So how about that euro dollar? So the euro dollar did the same pop. Did it not? It popped up today popped up before that so here's the first pop last week but there was some great scalps in here coming off this thing it was pretty amazing um four hour versions like uh so now we kind of sellers uh the breakout traders uh break traded that breakout on the four hour uh for a year right now so we're coming into the midnight midnight hour I'm going to break it down a little bit there, but that's fine because now it's coming into my buy trap. I'm going to do this. So I think we're going to go sideways now. Um, and the market's just going to drift. So these will be dailies. 10K is pretty, pretty aggressive. So that's a 30K there all night long into tomorrow. Should we tank into that price? And when we get up, I will scalp out if I see us come back to say, um, if we start coming up to here, I'm dumping all my buys. But that's about, I don't want to overload the thing, so I want to use, uh, leave some uh, margin open here to do some more trades with the British pound. Okay, so we just hit the top of the hour. British pound is down two hours straight I think we could still keep tanking a little bit get some follow through here we might dip into this window this is my big buy window here shit you can't even see it With I got so many uh, tickets in there I think I just saw some orders disappear okay that's the one hour so two hours straight down so I think we could still fall in this window that's a daily ticket logarithmic uh, spacing. I think it's two. What's inside that? Hopefully, I can read the. Well, I got to double click. Well, so here, here you got to right mouse click. When you're on the favorites, you can double click to open up the editor. Don't ask. Don't ask. Don't tell. Yeah, there you go. Forever and a day. Never responding. Not responding. I used up all my memory. And the clock's stealing it all. Okay. Here it is. Spacing on this. Okay, I think I went for, huh, interesting. I don't know, that's not what I thought. Okay, the numbers here, I got that blocked out. So, yeah, we're one pip apart, and then we're going to be two pips apart, and then three, four, because it's kind of like a, just counting up, what do you, whatever you call that. Okay, so the buyers are coming in here a little bit. After two hours down, the buyers come in. So the kind of sell that we're going to see is going to be, to me, like I'm a drifty thing. So I'm also going to sell. So the sell's up there, the buy's down below. We'll see what happens. I went along the euro here on the limits. You got filled on that. So I put all my buy limits below this and this and this thing here. I didn't get filled on all of them, but we're doing okay. We're up 64 cents for God's sake. Just euro. Euro only. Okay, that's that. Coming into the uh, European Open, it should be crazy.
smashing all over the place.